In this episode, we talk with Aubrey Hall of Town Hall Marketing. She is a Navy veteran, nurse, mom, and now business owner. She shares her story about leaving her nursing career and taking a leap of faith to pursue her passion, all of which started by following her gut instinct one day at lunch. She shares how she transitioned to becoming a business owner in the midst of COVID, moving her family to a different state, and homeschooling her kids while growing her business. We also talk about imposter syndrome and encourage other women to follow their passion, even if you are afraid or feel like an imposter. Her message is to just start taking action, start learning, start small, start imperfectly, but just start. Take a listen to today's episode. And if you love it, please follow Aubrey on Instagram. Links are in the show notes and share with others who might need this encouragement. You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Hello, and welcome back to The Food Code. I am very excited for today's um, podcast guest, Miss Aubrey. I met Aubrey virtually uh, in a entrepreneur's uh, Facebook group, a women's group, and uh, she was sharing a little bit about her journey leaving nursing. What are you hearing? Are you hearing? I'm hearing like staticky. Sorry, sound stuff. Do you hear clicking now? No. Okay. Restart. (laughs) Sorry. When we hear things, technology stuff. (laughs) When we hear things in our headphones, we know, and it's probably because me. messing with that. Okay. Hello and welcome back to the Food Code. Very, very excited for today's podcast guest, Miss Aubrey. I met Aubrey virtually in a women's entrepreneur Facebook group and she was sharing a little bit about uh, the imposter syndrome and how very real that is. And you know, I reached out to her. I'm very excited to hear too a little bit more about her journey leaving nursing uh, to pursue her passion now in marketing. So welcome, Aubrey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad we connected on that women's group. I was so excited to hear that I could share my story. Yes. Yeah. We work with a lot of women that, um, you know, they they struggle within limiting beliefs and pre-existing things and things that honestly like probably have accumulated over decades um, of telling themselves a certain story. And then it's just, we live what we believe. Um, And so we kind of connected to what your story was and we wanted you to share it because I think, you know, Liz and I obviously talk a lot. I think we have over 300 episodes now. So people are used to hearing our voices. Um, And I think sometimes when things are said just a slightly different way or from another perspective or there's some type of connection they feel. So we wanted to have you on to kind of explain your story. Um, So we would love if you could kind of introduce yourself, give us a little bit of background um, around, you know, what you're currently doing, what you used to do, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into where you got to where you are. Yeah, that sounds great. It it definitely has been a journey. I um, my name is Aubrey. I run a social media marketing company and consult um, with small businesses and entre- entrepreneurs. I live in Washington, um, but I've only been doing this for two years, entirely during the pandemic. Um, and for nearly twenty years prior, I was a nurse. Um, And that career choice I attribute to safety. Um, I did not have any business people in my family. Um, I'm first generation Filipino, so we moved here and my family, you know, just got factory jobs, you know, when they when they moved here. And so that's that's really all I knew. So the idea of starting a business was completely foreign to me, not even on the table, not on the radar, wasn't even an option. Um, And so. I was the first of all of my first generation cousins to go to college. And so I went to college as a communications major. I wanted to be the anchor woman on on the news. (laughs) And so I spent the first year, you know, doing all the undergrad stuff and getting ready to be prim and proper in front of the cameras all the time. And I just, I had this moment of like, that's just not safe. Like if I don't make it big, you know, can I make a living? Can I have a family on it? And 
Um, I want to hit the ground running and have a job as soon as I graduate. And 90% of the Filipino population goes into nursing. And I just, I felt like I was like, somehow led, tied to it. And so I, I went into nursing um, and it felt safe. It was hard. It's not my wheelhouse. Science and biology and chemistry is not my wheelhouse. Talking and communications is. And so it was hard. Um, then on a whim, a recruiter came to the college and took my offered us a trip to San Diego to see the Navy base. So my girlfriend and I were like, free trip to San Diego. Heck yeah. <laughs> so we went to San Diego. They wowed us with all this amazing scenery and opportunity. And we thought, what's another four years? So we joined the Navy on a whim, which is so not my personality either. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I cried in, through the entire six weeks of training and <laughs> regretted every day of it. Um, but it allowed me to, it was safe. I had a job and a paycheck and an incredibly fast paced world, great experiences. We went right into Operation Iraqi Freedom. And so that was my first four years and it was immediate taking casualties and hmm. learning how to nurse in that environment wow. was insane. Most incredible four years of my career to date. I mean, it was the experiences and the patience and everything that we did during that time still like gives me goosebumps. Yeah. But got out of the Navy. My husband and I met in the Navy. He was also in healthcare. We had a baby and decided we both were deployable and we didn't want that life yeah. of constantly being deployed separately because um, they would never send us to the same place. So um, we got out and decided to pursue civilian careers. I stayed in nursing. He went back to grad school. Um, and I just, I had a humdrum nursing career for a while. And then we had two more kids and I decided I wanted to be home. Um, and so then I took a desk job nurse role from home and I really missed people and that itch to like do something creative kept haunting me. And I kept thinking, all right, if I'm going to be home, there could be, I could be working for myself. You know, what could I be? But it just, the idea of starting a business was, it was something I couldn't even fathom, but I kept going back to like the bloggers and website people, but I hate like that kind of technology side of websites and being on social media, um, event planning. But then I was like, that's my weekends and nights. So I can't do that. So I did this desk job nursing role for eight years from home. Um, and during that time, but I'm getting really long winded that's okay. <laughs> during that time, we went, we went out to eat at one of our favorite restaurants. I went on their social media page and I was like, let's see if there's any promotions. There had been nothing for two years on their social media page. And I was like, gosh, that's really unfortunate because this is a really great restaurant. And on a whim, I walked up to the front desk and I said, you guys need someone to do your social media. And they were like, yes, meet us in three days, meet the manager and make a pitch. And I had nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. And so the next three days I spent like researching, what does this role mean? What, what, what would I do? What would I promise? Went into the interview. I guess I just had enough. And she was like, yes, please be your social media manager. I charged pennies <laughs> just to get the yes, because I had no idea what this person, what I could charge. And so from there, I got two more clients. I was still with my full-time nursing job. Um, and then we had to move to Washington for my husband's job. Two weeks before we move here, my job says, what do you know? You can't take your job to Washington. We have to terminate you. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my gosh, for the first time in nearly 20 years, I will be unemployed. Mm. But luckily my husband's job was a, enough of a cushion that he was like, Aubrey, if this is something you wanted to do, now's the time. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of the long story of how it all got started. It was accidental, but intentional. That's I don't amazing. Know what you want to call it? That's amazing. <laughs> well, I'm a pretty like I feel like sometimes quick decision maker. So sometimes I come up with an idea and like we're doing it, you know. Yeah. And I think sometimes if you feel it in your gut, you just got to go with it. Because what if you didn't do that? What if you just sat at your table and said, "Well, maybe somebody else will take over their social media and hopefully, you know, it gets better." But instead. You got up and you said, I'm going after it, right? And that's amazing. So first, thank you for your service um, in the Navy. Yes. I can't imagine what those six weeks were like because I have been to San Diego several times and seen the swimming in the ocean. So 
amazing job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, but you know, seriously, thank you for your service. And I think this is just an amazing story and I'm very excited for our listeners to continue to hear how things have evolved for you because we know so many people who are stuck right now in jobs that they don't want and have a passion or have, you know, this desire in their heart to do something different. And again, sometimes it just takes that one idea, that spark and just doing something, just throwing, you know, casting that net out and seeing what you catch. And so that is awesome. And hopefully you are charging your worth now because we know as entrepreneurs, very transparently, Beck and I used to charge pennies. Oh my um, gosh. And provide way too much. For, it's just like... Way too much. Yeah. And you know, it, it sounds bad because you're like, you want to provide a lot to people. You want to help people. That's why we got into this. But you are like, I, you know... You also need to know what you're worth and what it, what it can be worth to them. Because I think that's when you charge that, people don't take it as seriously. They don't, you know, they don't think that it's that valuable. So they won't put as much effort into it. And so it's just, you know, it, it's a two way street with that. And it's so hard, so, so hard. Um, but when you can change someone's life, when you can change someone's business and bring them more business and the investment in that, it's such a realistic thing to understand then. But like when people comprehend it, it's like, oh my gosh, that seems like way too much money. It's like, well, you're investing in your business. You're in for you. And for us, like people are investing in their lives. You're investing in changing your life for the better forever. Um, and so, you know, it's, but we get it. Everyone starts there because when you start, you have no confidence. I'll be totally honest. Right. When I, you know, when we started it, like I had certifications, I had some experience, but like I didn't have the confidence of seven plus years of experience that I have now. I didn't have the kind. And so you totally, I mean, like, I think everyone starts there, you know, it's, (laughs) and you have to develop, you know, because as a new entrepreneur, you have all of these ideas. And if you're a dreamer, you're, you know, creating these dream boards. And then it comes down to the actual real work of developing a program or a system, right? Those are like the hard things. Um, so one of the questions that I was going to ask, and it, you know, you kind of incorporated this in your story, but I'm curious in terms of any of the struggles that you faced. I mean, it sounds like you took a hard situation of that termination and said, this is it. I'm going to make the best of this and I'm going to go all in on my business. Um, and you have the support from your husband, which is fantastic. What were, what was that like? Like, what did you struggle with? Um, you know, emotionally, maybe the doubts that you had or the fears, um, you know, at that time when all of this was kind of transpiring. Yeah. Insecure. Um, lack of confidence, which you mentioned, which is, is silly because with all of my professional experience, you'd think I could harness that confidence, but it was, it's such a completely different industry and never having worked in it before. Um, I just, I, I didn't know exactly how to go from hobbyist to a entrepreneur. I didn't know how to grow. Um, and so when we moved here and I decided to go all in, it must have been three or four weeks later and the school shut down and my kids were home needed to be home full time and I had to homeschool. <laughs> so, you know, I had like four to maybe six glorious weeks of going all in on my business and I'm going to do this. We're going to make something of it. My husband and I kind of said, we're going to, you know, I'm going to go for it for a year and see, see what you can do. And then the schools closed down and my three kids were home in a place we had never lived in where we didn't know anybody and I had to homeschool them. And so again, it took a back seat and I, I felt like I couldn't really focus on it for that entire first year um, and really gain, gain the experience that I needed to feel confident. And so I think that if I had been able to really dive in and dedicate full-time days to it, I, I could have developed the confidence sooner um, and develop the systems and the processes, which, um, is one of my biggest tips for newer businesses, the systems and processes Mm -hmm. and standards, you know, operating procedures. Um, but so I think that biggest struggle, like I had my husband's support, it was just multitasking with kids at home. So being an entrepreneur, like you guys know, and raising kids and just finding the, finding the balance and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. When did you, I mean, like, how did you do that? 
you know, with kids at home and with trying to <laughs> have a business that's growing. Cause I, I mean, like with Liz and I, we were doing that as well. And f- I'll say, fortunately, we had not developed our program to where it is now, where we're con- we're on Zoom a lot with clients, and it, it was mostly email still at that time. Mm-hmm. So I was able to do it. Um, it wasn't easy, but like having a two year old at my, you know, pulling at my leg, not able to watch Sesame Street for another thirty minutes because I needed to get some emails done. Like, and it was the third month of quarantine, and I'm like pulling my hair out. Um, how did you find the time for yourself to kind of start to develop that? I have to batch time. So that's one of my other big things is batching time. So we would and we would get up and do school first thing. And then it, you know, school, homeschool, eventually it started out taking the full day. And then yeah. we got pretty good at using all the systems and the virtual programs and everything. And so eventually we got it down to half a day. And my 13 year old could do her own thing. And she was completely independent. So we would work till noon, have lunch together. And then I would go into my office and and then work the rest of the day while they did independent study and things like that. But it was definitely frustrating. And I, I didn't feel like I was doing either either thing well. Mm, I always yes. felt like I was neglecting the kids in their school or I was neglecting my new clients and not not, you know, devoting enough time to that. And, and then being a wife and there was groceries and dinners and things that were just not getting done. So you do it all but you don't feel like you're doing it well. Yeah. But everybody's just trying to do their best, you know, especially in a pandemic that, you know, was new at the time. No one ever been through anything like that before. And, um, it, you know, you learned a lot, I'm sure through this process. And I think one of the biggest things for us through, you know, the COVID time was we learned a lot about the importance of, like you said, batched, you know, um, like managing your schedule. Like we live by our calendars. Um, But we also learned about things we didn't want to do anymore and how to pivot and adjust and develop the programs that we now have today that, you know, we love um, and are very proud of. And so it was a big season of growth at the same time, very challenging and frustrating and all of the same emotions. I mean, I think as an entrepreneur and a mom, there's always guilt because your balance is never equal. Like you are never fully present 50% of the time, fully present 50% of the time and feel like you're doing all of them great. At least that's what I find for myself is that, um, you know, if I am working on the growth of the business, I'm spending a little less time, you know, with my son because I have, I'm required to spend more time for growth, right? Um, And then vice versa. And so it's really, for me, it's been a challenge of how do I maximize the time that I do have with him to be fully present? And then after he goes to bed, like work more or study more or the weekends, you know, things like that. And so it's always a challenge um, because we wear so many hats and that mom guilt is there in every way. I think it's just too, like for our listeners, to hear that it's normal. Like, Mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes we feel like we're alone when we are feeling like we're drowning, trying to keep up with everything. And we, you know, feel like we're a bad mom because we had to, you know, go into our office to do some work at night when we want to be spending time with the kids or whatever it is. And I will say this, I will say this until I die. Like, I know my husband loves our children just as much as I do. There's something about being a mom, though, that brings an extra level of guilt of just like, different it's different and you know my husband can be like hey i'm gonna go all day saturday and go golfing and not think twice if i want to take saturday to like fit in a workout and i might be 30 minutes late to their wake up time i'm like hey can you watch the kids like i'm gonna try and fit in a workout but i might not get to the time when they wake up and he's like yeah it's fine but like deep down i feel horrible like i'm like beating myself up because i'm trying to take 30 minutes of time that i should be there with them like it's just it's right. different and i think that knowing that it's normal and knowing that this is just how you feel during these processes and during trying to build something for yourself whether it's a health journey whether it's a business whether it's you know going back to school whatever it is it is normal to feel that way and know that you are not alone um But I'd love to talk a little bit more too on this, you know, imposter syndrome that you probably went through. Like nursing was probably your identity. You know, you were a nurse. That's, you know, that's what you do. So recreating yourself and kind of taking on this different venture in life and being able to do that 
without, you know, completely holding yourself back? Like that first step, that first, like, are there anything in terms of like mantras or, you know, things that you found successful for yourself um, in this process to help continuing down that path when I'm sure a lot of times you're like, who am I to do this? You know, I, I think a lot of people feel that way when they're trying to take on something big um, and those pre-existing belief systems and things that you've told, like the thoughts in our head. Um, is there anything that you've found has been like really successful or helpful for you during this journey? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And imposter syndrome is, I, I never heard the term until I started this business. And, you know, when I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's me. I, <laughs> I feel like an imposter. And I think, you know, I chose nursing. Had I stayed in the communications and marketing and journalism, I feel like I would have learned those skills earlier. But as a nurse, I went into a field where I was taking orders. I was task oriented. I was managed by a clock. I was serving people all day. I was being told what to do by doctors. And then I joined the Navy where someone else was telling me what to do with my time, what to do with my career, what field of nursing. And so I chose a career and the Navy where people were just constantly telling me what to do with my time and where to go and who to be, um, what to wear even. Um, and, and so to be in that for, you know, two decades and then suddenly switch to starting a business and having to make decisions for myself, that even that was uh -huh. tough, which seems silly, right? Does it seem, it seems silly when I hear it come out of my mouth, like suddenly having to make my own decisions for my job, you know, as a nurse, you had your orders for the day and you had tasks you had to complete by the end of your shift. And suddenly no one's telling me what to do. I, I just have this vision and I didn't have the skills to know how to go from, you know, point A to point B. And so that made me feel like an imposter. And then offering a service that I felt like I knew on the periphery. I was an early adopter to MySpace and <laughs> wedding blogs and the knot and then the baby websites. Like I, I was all over that. And then the family websites, I felt like I was a really early adopter to all of that. And so I felt like this, surely this is right up my alley. I can do it, but it is so much more than just posting. Right. And I, I still meet potential clients who think it's just posting and walking away. And it's so much more than that. Um, it really is marketing and it's just a platform for it, but you know, I, and I had to learn as I went and the more I learn, you become confident. Um, but you, I still deal with imposter syndrome every day. Who am I? What am I doing? Why should someone hire me? And I think, so <laughs> my mantra is sometimes I look at all my degrees and certifications <laughs> <laughs> and they're right in front of me. So I look at them and I'm like, I am qualified. I am professional. I have experience. It may not be in this industry, but I have 20 years of professional experience. I am a leader. I did, you know, and so I just have to constantly remind myself of these on those days where I'm feeling really down and I've started to scroll and compare myself to everyone mm -hmm. else out there who's two, three years ahead of me. And I'm sure everyone can, can relate to, especially social media people, because we're on, on social media all the time that you can't help but see where everybody is and what everyone's doing. And so, yes. you know, aside from my, I'm professional, I'm experienced, I'm qualified mantra is social media is everyone's highlight reel. Like mm -hmm. everyone off of social media is probably feeling the same way. And so <laughs> telling myself that every, you know, every time I'm feeling down and, and then <laughs> telling my husband too, cause he's the best reminder of me. To, he's like, Aubrey, you've done harder things. You've climbed bigger mountains. You've accomplished so it. much more in your life than you can think. So, you know, going to him when I'm having a down day has been so helpful too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because you forget those things. You yes. do. Yeah. And it's so important to have a spouse or like your person that can remind you because yeah. it's really, really hard. Like you said, when you first started like going from structure to now I'm the person that has to figure it out and I'm starting from scratch. Like I remember, you know, I went to a couple conferences with my husband and he's like, you need to build something. You need to build something. And I'm like, okay, I'm all about it. And I would sit down and I would like journal and I'm like staring at the paper right? Uh, because I was working at um, in corporate HR at that point in time. And so I was excited about this. I had a vision for it, but it was like, 
how the heck am I going to create this thing that I want? And, you know, it's like, you just stare at a paper for a while. And then eventually it comes to you and you start to get more ideas and get better. And then I, you know, I met Becca and, um, you know, then we combine forces. And so we're very blessed with that. But, you know, I can't imagine like how you felt, especially, you know, in the chaos of now we're homeschooling three children and all of these things. But I love that you've, you know, shifted into understanding that your experience does play a huge role in the business that you are because you can be a leader. It's just, I'm leading you know, a different um, business at this point in time. And so reminding yourself, and I would say this to anybody on the podcast is like, you're a badass and yeah. you can do anything that you want to do as long as you are willing to put your head down and work. And, you know, the, the comparison thing I think is so, so real because like you said, social media is like this huge highlight platform for a lot of people. And, you know, I know for Beck and I, as I would say, maybe we were growing up in the nutrition space. Now I feel like we've had, you know, more of a presence um, and people know, you know, more about who we are through our podcast and things like that. But growing up, it's like, you're looking at all of these other businesses and you're thinking, wow, how did they build this? You know, but we just kept putting our head down and doing the work. And now we're in a place that we've hired other coaches and expanding our team and being able to do things that, you know, we never even like dreamt would come true in the two, three years that it has. And so just know, you know, for yourself, but also for all the listeners, the imposter syndrome is very, very real as well as comparison in the entrepreneur game. Um, But one thing that I love about that community in terms of where we met, you know, online is that they're so supportive of each other in terms of, you know, female entrepreneurs. And we're getting ready to go to a women in business uh, conference this year. And I'm really excited because we need to be surrounded by other females who are badasses and saying, this is what I want to do with my life. I'm, you know, going to leave my job and I'm going to build my empire because that's how we make an impact, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I love that. Um, I love that too. I, I think like, one of the biggest things and you kind of mentioned like having these degrees in front of me, having my husband, like call him like the hype person in your life. Like I plan on being that for my children. Like I want to be their hype person and make them realize that they can do anything. Um, I was joking like last night, my little, I have a six month old. She was eating sweet potatoes and she figured out how to like pick it up. I'm like, yes, Tay Tay. Yes. Good job. Good job. I'm going to be your hype person. You can do this. <laughs> I was like, I will forever be that for my children. But I think a lot of people, don't surround themselves with, you know, positive influences. They have friends that are unfortunately toxic because their friends are just as negative as they have become. Like, and so you're always hearing people complain about how they can't do something or about how they're stuck with weight loss or how they're, you know, like miserable with their job or whatever it is or in their marriage or whatever's going on. And, and we get surrounded by this and we get sucked into it. And one of the biggest things that I think helps people change is constantly putting a different message in front of your face, whether it be from podcasts, whether it be from women's groups, whether it be, you know, a mentor, a coach, whatever. But if you don't have the support, you need to find it from somewhere. You need to find it so that you are getting a different messaging and you are getting a different point of view because that will keep you stuck a hundred percent. Like we always talk about, you are the product of the five closest people to you or the five, you know, like your environment essentially. Um, so for you, are there any like favorite books or favorite podcasts or anything that you consume a lot of to keep like that positivity there? Cause I think for a lot of people, that's a, that's a big struggle that they have. That, that's huge. And I wish I'd, I'd learned that sooner. Um, you know, that first year I spent homeschooling and trying to grow the business. I, I was alone and I didn't, I didn't know how important it was to have a community. I, I had a couple friends who have, you know, started businesses and are the founders now of huge franchises across the country. Awesome. And so I had inspiration, but I'd never tapped into it. Um, so now year two, sort of three, I know that now. And so I've sought mentors and I started investing in myself and in the business. Um, and I think it, it takes some time before you realize if you started kind of accidentally semi-intentionally, like I did to go from hobbyist to I'm building a business, I'm building something I want my, you know, to be able to hand off to my kids, to support us. Um, 
And so that takes investment. And so, mm-hmm. so I've started literally just in the last three or four months going to classes, seeking out other women entrepreneur groups. I am hosting one at my house on the first Thursday for local women in business and um, bringing it together because I kind of realized how this sounds funny, but it, here's the confidence a little bit. Like I'm kind of inspiring, you know? And yes. so I think we should, other entrepreneurs out there, if you've started, you are inspiring. You are inspiring to the people who are still thinking about it and thinking how to get out of their careers. And so I've enjoyed that part too, is even though I feel like I'm starting, I'm, I have something to give and I have something to teach. And so, so that's been a new revelation as of the last, you know, six to 12 weeks, but definitely I found a mentor. I've taken the webinars and the classes and um, found online networking groups for women in business. And then I just thought gathering our local ladies who are, you know, makers and innovators and just getting together to share what we're sharing here to inspire each other. And I thought, it'd be, you know, I feel like I might be in the middle. And so I, I asked, invited some people over who are several years ahead. And then I invited some people who I know who are thinking about it, but are afraid to take the leap. And so I'm hoping that we can do what we're doing yeah. here and just share our stories, let people know that they're not alone, that we're all struggling with it. Um, and then of course, let's not reinvent the wheel either. Like somebody tell me what to do. So <laughs> I don't have to sit around thinking about it. And so if we can do that for others and pass it around. That's, yeah. that's a great support system. But, oh, I love Brene Brown. Of course, I'm listening yes. to all of her stuff. Yeah. I um, love her. She's good. Oh, she's good. Kind of- you you made me think with the navy of Liz and I really like David Goggins. Um, he oh, yeah. he has some great content. It's very like obviously rougher on the edges, but you know I think in life that's how it is, and that's just kind of how life is sometimes. Um, and I think like you said, inspiring. Like we obviously work within a health industry, um, and so a lot of our listeners are people trying to make a difference with like their health and their journeys of health. And a lot of people don't realize you might be inspiring other people by your choices. Um, And you might be, you know, by not drinking at that event because you want to wake up and work out the next morning or you're trying to, you know, give up sweets. And so you're taking a little break from sugar. And so by not picking up the cookie at the office party, someone else might see you and have the power then from you making that decision. It may never even tell you about it, but you mean to understand that the choices you make do and can influence other people and know that you are not the only person that's probably struggling and other people are probably having the exact same thoughts that you are. And so, you know, like you said, have the group, try and communicate with other people, try and get, you know, the inspiration from other people and be the inspiration to other people. If it's for nothing else, obviously it should be for yourself um, and doing it for yourself, but also just taking action on it. Because I think, like you said, there is always going to be that level of like, I'm a little unconfident or, in, you know, not confident with what I'm doing. And the only way to cure that confidence is to take the action on it and to get the experience behind it. Because no one has experience when they start. That's the point of starting. You gain the experience and you're never going to start in a perfect place. And so just starting the stuff. Like Liz and I have done so many programs and thank goodness for the mentors we have had that have pushed us to be like, I don't care if you haven't you haven't finished the program you're creating. You've done enough to be able to start it. So you're going to start it and you're going to put it on social media and you're going to have people sign up for it and you're going to figure out how to finish it. And it's kind of just like taking that leap of faith and doing it even though it doesn't feel perfect yet because nothing feels perfect. And so, you know, for you with kind of developing your business now in a new location, I'm sure there were moments of that, of, you know, not feeling like you had everything put together and trusting and having faith that, you would figure it out. Um, I mean, is that kind of like, I mean, like that was the first job you ever got was you took that leap of faith and that social media. So was there anything like went through your head at that time or any other experiences that you've been like, I don't don't know how to do this, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to make it happen. I'm sure that's been like most of your career because that feel like that's every entrepreneur. But is there anything in particular that you could talk to on that? Oh gosh. Well, I think, so I I have that same, like I, have put offers out there and programs preparing, <laughs> I guess you could say. And then, and then people have signed up for it and I have to go, okay, all right, we're going to schedule it out for another week or so, so that I can get my shit together. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I think the biggest, the biggest um, thing you can do to 
combat that lack of confidence is to learn it and know it. And I, and I think that that has been my, my biggest helper in all of this is learning what I need to know. And so diving into all the research and the, the skills required and business building skills, but also being a marketing um, person. And so, you know, I've, I don't, I, I say this on my social media pages, but to, you know, degrees and certifications, certifications, they don't necessarily matter if you have the experience, but they help you build confidence. And so mm-hmm. that's, I didn't do I thought I needed it. I needed the confidence. And for me, having the education and the backing and the theory and the knowledge behind it gives me confidence. Yeah. And it helps me put that pitch out there to sell myself also is that I, I didn't just start from nowhere I've gotten the credentials anyway I think it's it's knowing the stuff in your material helps you build confidence um but yeah my husband says he's like do not put any more programs out there until you've planned them out how about that (laughs) because he's like I watched you like put the programs out you didn't expect people to jump on it so quickly and then they do and then you're frazzled for two weeks trying to put it all together and he's like and I'm running your errands for you (laughs) so like and you know printer. I need you to buy this. Can you make this? <laughs> well, and it's a family business, right? <laughs> that's a family business. But you know what I have found? And I think this is for women who are doing it all, right? You are wearing all the hats. You are the wife, you're the entrepreneur, um, you're the mother, but inside of your business too, you're not just the entrepreneur, you're the marketing person, you're the salesperson, you are the CEO, and you're basically running, unless you have an assistant, you know, now, um, you're basically running every function of your business. And, you know, you're posting your own social media stuff, you're making your own videos, you're editing all of those things. Like, Rebecca and I were very, very blessed that my husband has helped us grow tremendously, and does, you know, a lot of our uh, social media editing and whatever, um, emails and all the marketing things basically that we just hand over. Here's the story. He puts it together. <laughs> we film the things. He edits it all <laughs> because it takes us hours. Like we've been in the TikTok challenge and very transparently, anybody who has watched our TikToks, those one minute and 40 second videos take us at least 45 minutes <laughs> between it's unbelievable. Filming, all the little editing. captions and the pictures and the timing and the, it is not as easy as it seems. <laughs> and the 20 somethings are just like crushing it. And I feel like I'm elder in the space because of all the people that are doing it so much. I'm like, oh my gosh. No, but I say all of that to say that I think sometimes you do just have to put it out there and you have to put your message out to the universe and you'll get it done because that's the type of person maybe that you are. Other people are planners. I was a planner for a long time and now I've just realized, you know, more and more that we're in it. If we have an idea and it feels right in your gut, run with it. Just do it. Like don't wait until things are perfectly aligned because then you don't ever do it or you put it off way too long and somebody else has already done it, right? It's like um, we've been listening to a book by Tim Grover winning. It's like if you're procrastinating, Somebody else is going after what you want and they're going to get it because you have sat on your butt and, you know, not launched it. So I'm all for actually just launching things and then you just figure it out, as Marie Forleo says. Um, But I think that's so great that you have such a support system, too. So, um, yeah. Okay. So as we we want to be, you know, respectful of your time, maybe share, you know, just a couple of tips um, for new entrepreneurs uh, if they are just starting out or maybe speak to the population that is, you know, sitting in an office today and really wants to start something, but is afraid to take that leap. Oh gosh. I, I echo what you said is don't wait for perfection. Don't wait for all the stars to align because then you will never start. And I say to the people sitting around who are sitting in their offices in their corporate jobs or what have you, thinking about an idea, I, I just, the idea kept coming back to me. It would not release me. I could not stop thinking about it. And if you've got something like that in your life, in your mind, in your vision, do it, do it. And you don't have to let go of your job yet. Test it, start small, pick something easy and, and just start. Honestly, I am so grateful something something had came over me that day and I just I put the offer out there and they said yes. Otherwise, I really can see myself still reading medical records and nursing possibly. So don't wait to start. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the other thing is 
is other people are doing it. You can do it too. I, I tell people that all the time and literally I can do it. I feel like I'm the most unlikely person to have started a business. And I say that about joining the military and doing this. If other people can do it, there is no reason that you can't do it. And Absolutely. so I hope that brings, you know, it resonates with people out there. Cause I, I, it was someone like that telling me the same thing, you know, that maybe put that wild hair on my head that day. So yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway. Yeah, I totally agree. No matter what your journey is, no matter what your faith or hope or whatever you're trying to accomplish is, like trust that you can too. Because I think there are way too many people in this world that doubt, doubt themselves and it keeps people stuck and unhappy. And in my opinion, it's like, if you're unhappy in life right now, what's the worst that could happen? You stay right. where you're at, you know? And so why not? That's, you know, what? why not? Mm-hmm. Just ask yourself that question. Why not me? Why can't I do this? And then just take a leap of faith and start taking action towards it. That's the only thing in my experience that cures ex- anxiety and all of those doubts is just taking action on whatever it is that you are trying to accomplish, even if it's small action, like start making a list, start making a pros and cons list of, you know, what you want to accomplish, start putting deadlines on things. I think that's really, really helpful is I'm going to do this by this date. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, and start putting some structure around it. And that action will ease the anxiety. It will give you, start to give you faith. It'll start to give you hope that it is real because too many thoughts stay in our head um, and they don't turn into anything. So Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, Thank you so much, Aubrey, for coming on and sharing your story. I think that it will definitely resonate with some people um, and let people know maybe where they can find you on social media or website or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. I am on Instagram as Town Hall Marketing and Facebook as THM Social Media and then on the web as Town Hall Marketing. Please connect. I love being people's cheerleaders and (laughs) And I will be your cheerleader and your number one fan on social media if you connect with me. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah. So we will put all of the links um, in the show notes. And again, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.